I'm reading. Oh, oh right, right. So in case you can't tell this week, we are talking about reading while writing. A um, couple of things, I guess. Uh, first, when I read books, I tend to get so wrapped up in whatever I'm reading that I neglect my writing. Um, another thing is that when I read, it tends to inspire me to do completely different things than what I'm working on. So that that's a problem. And another thing uh, is that when you read, especially when you read multiple books by the same author, you tend to pick up things from that author, whether it's things that they do in their world, whether it's their tone of writing, whether it's how they structure sentences, or whether it's the style of plot evolution that they do, you tend to pick a few things up. Um, sometimes that's good because it can improve your writing, but I also have to say that it's a bit of a hassle because when you go back to edit, you have these inconsistencies. And that's part of why you... One of the hardest parts to me about editing is that where you were at the start of a book and what you were planning to do with that story at the beginning are completely different from how you see your story by the time you're finished. And sometimes with published books, you can really tell um, that the start of the book was going a completely different place than the ending of a book. Um, usually that's with an author's first couple of books um, that you tend to notice, and then after that I guess they get the hang of it or something. Um, but you always have to pay more attention to what you were doing, to what you did at the beginning of a book once you've finished, um, and I guess that's why I advocate, I don't I guess that's why I advocate once you finish directly going back to the beginning and editing things and changing it up so that your vision doesn't, so that your vision doesn't change because it makes your story more consistent. Um, another thing I advocate is editing by storyline rather than chronologically. Um, going through and editing for a particular storyline as in, okay, now I'm going to go in and work on all the things that have to do with the main plot, and then now I'm going to go in and edit all of the things that have to do with this subplot, and then this subplot, and now I'm going to add in this thing, so I'm just going to go in and add those parts. And that can be very time-consuming, and it can take forever, but ultimately I feel like it yields better results. Um, <laughs> and I feel like it can be especially hindering if you are reading things that are completely different from what you're writing. For example, say you're reading The Fault in Our Stars, but you're writing a vampire novel or something. Those are completely different things, usually, and your plot is going to be completely different, and the focus of your book is going to be completely different, because John Green tends to use romance and friendship as catalysts for... for the main character's euphemism, no, not euphemism, um, oh god, what's that word? Epiphany. Epiphany about life. John Green's main characters always have an epiphany about life and treating people certain ways at the end of their book. At the end of his book. <laughs> um, and fantasy novels generally don't have that stuff. But that doesn't mean they can't have those things. So if you want to go through and put in those things, go for it. I really want to see that kind of stuff. Do it. Do it now. Um, I'll see you guys next week.